Welcome! Today I'm going to be talking to you about Christ in the Old Testament. Now there's a common misunderstanding that Jesus is nowhere in the Old Testament, but that he is only in the New Testament. And it, it comes from the idea that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He took on humanity and he came down to be clothed with humanity. But is Christ found throughout the Old Testament? A lot of times in our minds we like to differentiate the God of the Old Testament is cruel and mean and wicked. But the God of the New Testament, or Christ in the New Testament, He's loving, He's friendly, He's inviting, and I want to know more about Him. But today, I'm going to share with you how you can find Jesus throughout the Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. But before I do that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Enoch Leffingwell. I'm passionate about helping young people to identify their unique talents and dedicate them to the Lord's service. I help people to make their devotions irresistibly interesting. And if this is something that you're interested in, we release new videos every single week, all throughout the week. And you would, I encourage you to subscribe to the Army of Youth channel where you'll find more content like this as well. So first of all, how are we going to find Christ throughout the scriptures? Well, Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse, I'm sorry, John chapter 5 verse 39, he said, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are, and they are they which testify of me. So the scriptures, they all testified of Christ. And in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 43, the apostle was speaking of Jesus and the resurrection and his death on the cross. And he's speaking about all of the prophets from Moses, Elijah, to all the prophets in the Old Testament as well. He said to him, to Christ, give all prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins so we find that the prophets in the in the old testament these were the only scriptures that the apostles that G christ and the new testament church had at the time was the old testament scriptures in second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 it said all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And that scripture that they had was dealing with the Old Testament. That's the only scripture that they had. It's all profitable, and it's not just Christ found in one uh, period of the gospel. We'll see him everywhere. So, in, so how are we going to do that? One of the ways is first recognize that Christ said, in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in verse 14, Jesus, John goes into further detail and says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That Word of God is Christ. Christ identifies Himself. He is called in Revelation 19, 13. He has a name written on his vesture where his name is the Word of God. So every single verse testifies of Christ. Every single story in the Old Testament, it's not just historical, dry, disconnected, uninteresting facts and dates and events, but it's actually things representing Jesus Christ himself. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, it describes how, how all these things, speaking about the Old Testament history, all these things happen unto them for in samples upon whom the ends of the world are come. So in other words, they're, they're, the word in sample in the margin, it's the word type. All the Old Testament history is a type of what's going to take place at the end of the world, but it's also a type of of Christ. And if you don't know what a type is, think about it like a, it's kind of like a Hot Wheel. You see the toy Hot Wheel cars, they are a miniature model of, like you might have a little mini Ferrari, and that is the type and 
the they they this car represents a Ferrari, the real deal, the life size sports car. But you have the miniature model, and then you got the real thing. So throughout the scriptures, when um, when Genesis chapter three and verse twenty one describes how right after Adam and Eve sinned, God made coats of skin and clothed Adam and Eve so that their nakedness wouldn't show. That skin doesn't come from anywhere. Something had to die in order to receive that, um, to be protected, in order to provide the coats of skin, that clothing. And Revelation 13, 8 gives us an idea. It calls Jesus the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. So that lamb represented Christ and how he would give his life so that we could be clothed with his righteousness, so that we can receive the remission of sins, the filthy garments and the, the sin and the misery and all this, this inconsistencies that we face that so easily perplex and discourage us. They could be washed in the blood of the Lamb, and Christ can give us a new garment, a new life, a new character, and a new righteousness that is of the Lord. And all of this is symbolized right there in the first three chapters of Genesis. All the scriptures, it's a type of Jesus. That's why John the Baptist said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. When he saw Jesus coming up, Jesus represented the lamb from whom all the Jewish sanctuary services, all the different types and ceremonies, they all pointed to Jesus as the fulfillment of these, of these ceremonies. The sanctuary was the gospel in types and symbols. All the things, when you really study into that, it all points to Christ. There's a really powerful book I would recommend you check it out. If this is new to you and you want to know more about the sanctuary, it is powerful. Psalms 77, 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Jesus says, I am the way. So, the sanctuary is showing you the way to the Father through Jesus Christ. So, in order to look more into that, I really encourage you, friends, to get the book, The Cross and Its Shadows. That goes into great detail about the sanctuary and it shows the types, the symbols that represent Jesus. And it is powerful. So that's, that's the first thing I want to just cover is that Christ is throughout the scriptures. Here's number two. This is what I highly recommend you do. Every youth should be encouraged to trace out every object in nature and the Bible that represents Christ. Many of the Bible authors use nature to represent spiritual truths. And much in nature will communicate to us more about the plan of salvation and more about spiritual things. In fact, Romans chapter 1 says that the invisible things of God are clearly seen through nature so that we would be without excuse, that we can see Christ through the the objects of nature. So what we what we did recently, this was amazing. We set out at the Army of Youth to try to make a list of every symbol, every representation that we possibly could through the scriptures that pointed to Christ, that was a symbol of Jesus. And as we are putting together this list, it was changing all of our lives. We started first with 10, then it went to 30, then it went to 50, and, and, and it was fun because during family worship, we have evening and morning worship every single, every day, and we all got together in a group, and we're like, okay, we're gonna work on this list together. We had this Google Doc, and we're like, let's see how many symbols we can think of that represent Christ. We saw that Malachi 4.2 said, Jesus is the son of righteousness. So he represents the sun, the sun, how it gives life and warmth to the world and sunshine that gladdens and refreshes the earth. That is a symbol of Jesus. We're like, okay, okay. What about rest? Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come unto me all you that labor and I will give you rest. So that refreshing feeling that you get when you wake up and you had a great night's sleep and you're just like, 
ah, I'm ready to take on the day. That's what Christ does for us so that we can have a refreshing time so that spiritually the weariness, the sin, the perplexity and the stress and guilt that just weighs us down and exhausts us spiritually, Jesus is saying, come, not only will I give you physical rest, but I'll give you spiritual rest from sin. And that is what God wants us to have, a good night's rest in Jesus. And seeing also how he's called in Revelation 22, uh, 16, I am the root and offspring of David. So he's the root, the bright and morning star. So he's the morning star. He is a star. So when you see at night, the beautiful, that's one of the things that I love doing is when I go sleep outside, when I go camping, I, I just love looking at the sky and I just see all the stars, the Milky Way, especially when you're in country away from the light pollution. It's like the stars just, they pop up and you can see them so vividly. And I could just stare at it all night long, but I don't because I want that rest as well. But you can see that that star represents Christ how the darker it is, the brighter those stars shine. And that's how Jesus is. You and I, we are encouraged to be lights to the world, a city that sat on a hill that cannot be hid. The darker this world gets, the brighter Christ in us, the hope of glory is to shine forth so that others can see the light as well. I mean, there's symbols we were seeing all throughout the scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse four, it showed that, that while the children of Israel were coming out of Exodus and they're like, Moses, you brought us out here to die. We're going to we're going to die of thirst. We're hungry. We're thirsty. And mind you, they had water, but they were worried and stressed about the future problems like this lack of water that they might have. And they're like, Moses, you're going to kill us. But God told Moses to hit this rock, to smite the rock and out of it would come forth a wellspring of water to feed them. And so he, he hit the rock. And then 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, that rock was Christ. So Christ is the one who can not only refresh us physically, spiritually, but even like our thirst. Sometimes we just, that's why Jesus said in, in the Beatitudes, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Because when you have a desire to do what is right, when you have a desire to follow God and to really serve Him, but you and and maybe you find that you're 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 not really living up to your conscience. Your conscience is heavy. You're you're not doing what you know is the right thing to do. Christ is saying, look, if you desire that, if you thirst after righteousness, I will fill that void. You come to me and I'll give you living water and you'll never thirst again. I will satisfy and quench the longing of your soul. It's amazing. That rock represented Jesus. That's why when Moses, he was only supposed to hit the rock once and then speak to it the second time. Well, he hit the rock a second time and God was really upset, even to the point where he wasn't able to go into the promised land. Why? Because it was messing up the type. That was to be a symbol of Jesus where Christ was smitten once for our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And with his stripes, we are healed. That, that hitting the rock was a symbol of Christ dying on the cross. And then because Christ died once, then we accept him as our personal savior. Then afterwards, all we have to do is pray. We can speak to God and we could receive that soul refreshment. He didn't have to die twice. That, that symbol of, of Moses hitting the rock twice, it broke the representation of Christ. And that wasn't God's will. You can see that intentionally, God was setting forth these symbols all throughout the Old Testament so that you and I could have better understanding of who Christ is for us. He did that in seeking to teach the children of Israel, the Jews of the Hebrews of old, lessons of the character, the love, the gospel, the life, the death of Jesus Christ. Jesus was taught through the Old Testament symbols and typology. And 
I really find that if we just look at the Old Testament as just dry and boring, irrelevant, like these stories are just way old, like that's the Old Testament, then we're really going to miss out on the huge blessings, the refreshment that we can find in getting a closer knowledge of Jesus Christ. When we start to uncover, and I'm telling you, when you start training your mind to look for the symbols of Christ, it's like the whole Bible opens up and it becomes a new book and your devotions start to become irresistibly interesting. And you're like, this is amazing. I want to know more about Christ. I want to study more of the Old and the New Testament and compare them together and see what God has in store for me today. I get to have my devotions and it's just so exciting when you're able to uncover and see Christ throughout all the scriptures. My challenge to you, friends, is to start a list. Have a page, and on that page, make a list of every symbol you could possibly think of that represents Christ. And if you do this, you'll never look at the Bible the same again. This was life-changing for all of us. Not only was it fun to do together, so involve your friends as you're making this list, if, if you have friends that are spiritual that want to study, you, then you would be like, hey, what, verse, what, what symbols can you think of? And you might find that Christ is the seed. He is the stem of Jesse. He is the root and offspring of David. He is the branch in Zechariah. He is the vine in John. He is, the, he, he is so many different things. He is the way. So every sidewalk, every path that you see that's, that's representing Jesus, he is the the son he and um he's just represented throughout all scriptures for us and never again will you look at this world again i promise you friends if when you thus acquaint yourself with christ in this way never again will the world be a lonely or desolate place but instead you will see it now as your father's house filled with the presence of the one who once dwelt among men and it is exciting and I'd love to hear from you what types of symbols what representations do you see that Christ is found throughout scripture and nature and why I would love to hear what other symbols that you can think of and leave them in the comments below because I read every comment and I love hearing from you when I when I read your messages they are so encouraging and you let us know what kind of videos you like to see. What kind of videos spoke to you? What part of it really touched your heart? Because we will create more videos like this or like what your comments are or your questions are for you because we love you and we care. And um, I want to I wanna see you being able to find Christ and have a new transforming experience with the Word of God. I'm here for you. We're all here for you at the Army of Youth. And I'm excited to see what God does through you. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want more training, go over to thearmyofyouth.com on our website. We have more trainings. We have ongoing videos and, and programs that you can, you can learn about to make your devotions irresistibly interesting. And I'm telling you, friends, it gets better and better. And put that list together. We were able to come up with 160 different symbols that represent Jesus, and we're just getting started. I know that the Bible has so many more to unmask and reveal, and I, I encourage you, just start with 50. Make it a goal to be like, hey, can I come up with 50 symbols that represent Jesus? And then you'll have a resource that you can use to, to go through and um, to click I mean, as you're going through your, your devotions and you see the rock, you're like, hey, that rock is Christ. Or as you see the sun, you're like, hey, that represents Jesus. And you can see all the different symbols throughout the scriptures. So go over to thearmyofyouth.com, check that out. And if you like this video, hit like because it really helps. And share it with others because sharing is caring. And if you, and this video has been a blessing to you, then we want to share with others what God has shared with us. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.